In this video I'm going to talk about five things that you probably didn't know about Newcastle. It's coming up. So number one, how much do you know about the song The Blade and Races? So that little chorus you've just heard there in the introduction, 99% of you will know it is from the song The Blade and Races. It's, a, it's a, an anthem of the Geordie people, it's sang at the Newcastle matches, but it's also the marching song of the Royal Regiment of the Fusiliers. So let's just listen to it again. So I bet you didn't know that we're all singing the wrong words in the chorus, but I tell you what, I'm not going to see anything if you don't see anything. I'll come back to the words in a minute. So if you don't know, the song was written by a gated lad back in 1862 called George Geordie Ridley, when he was a kind of a music hall singer and entertainer. And it's about a famous race back in the day, I think it started in 1861, it was a horse race in the Bladen area, which used to go around an island, which used to be uh, in the River Tyne, which isn't there anymore. And for people who wanted to go and see it, they used to go on a coach uh, back in the day from Newcastle city centre, which went along Scotswood Road to about six miles to Bladen to see the Bladen races. In 1981, they made it a running race from Bladen, which happens in 9th of June every year. Now, Geordie Ridley, like most people back then, especially kids from eight years old, he worked down the pit. He used to have to pull and push these these coal wagons with other kids of his age and, uh, and the women of the family. It was back-breaking work. If you think of these days, if you haven't got the latest iPhone for your eight-year-old, there's going to be hell to pay. But anyway, back to the words of the Bladen Racers. And if you didn't know, in the big market of Newcastle, where I'm stood now, there's a, um, like a concrete bench which runs uh, from Granger Street down to the public toilets there. And along the side of that is the words to the Bladen Racers. So another little did you know in relation to the Bladen Racers and Geordie Ridley. He died, he died aged 30 uh, after a short illness. But his great, great nephew is Eric Burden, who was a singer with the animals. Whilst we're in the big market, we'll talk about number two. Do you have any idea why the big market, spelled B-I-G-G, -G, is called the big market? Well, it goes back to the Middle Ages when this used to be a, a thriving marketplace because this particular area formed part of the Great North Road which went from London all the way up to Scotland. And in some of the stalls here in the big market back in the Middle Ages, they used to sell a type of coarse barley, which was called Big, B-I-G-G. -G. And what you might not know on that concrete uh, bench, which we just had a look at, encrusted in there in certain little spots, there are some um, symbols, uh, little, little metal um, representations of the coarse barley. Of course, the big market now is synonymous with Newcastle's famous nightlife, especially for the more younger crowd. But uh, although the whole area here in front of me and behind me is collectively called the Big Market, the area down there to my right is Cloth Market, and the area down here on my left is um, Groat Market. And I don't know if you can see over my left shoulder is St Nicholas's Cathedral, which gives Newcastle its city status. Unfortunately now, in my opinion, the Big Market is starting to look a bit tired and run down. Even though there's promise of some money from a regeneration fund, there's 31 buildings in the big market, and within that 31 buildings, some of them, or most of them, actually listed and in a state of disrepair. There are about 20 pubs and restaurants, so it's a it's 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 a thriving area for the nighttime economy. Number three, did you know Newcastle's oldest pub is the Old George, just behind me here? It dates back to 1582, and it's just off the cloth market. So not only is it Newcastle's oldest pub, but it's also famous because King Charles I used to come here. Back in 1646-47, during the English Civil War, he was an open prisoner here, and he was housed in a, in a building which is now the Lloyds Bank next to the monument. And whilst here, believe it or not, he used to play golf at Shieldfield in Newcastle, but also come down to the Old George for a pint, and uh, I'm informed that the chair that I used to sit on is still here. So you can just picture the scene, King Charles I sitting in his chair, drinking a bottle of Newcastle brew nail, having a stotty cake and tapping off with the lasses in the big market. I think they wore next to now then as well. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. They didn't have stotty cakes in 1646. They also say that the old George is the most haunted building in Newcastle. 
if you believe that sort of claptrap, adamant. Number four. Do you know what this is? And this, and this. So this ceramic Spears Invader on a Union Jack in Pink Lane, Newcastle, is done by the anonymous French urban artist who goes by the pseudonym Invader, and he's put these sort of things up all over the world, and as far as I know, in 79 cities in 33 countries, as far as we're, as San Paulo in Brazil. He's done one in uh, Under the Sea in Cancun Bay in Mexico, but also on, uh, he has a similar one in Cannon Street in Hong Kong. So he has a bonus, did you know? I was based in Hong Kong for three years at the beginning of the 1990s when I was in the Royal Air Force. Loved it. I was it Gong Siu Siu, Guang Dong Hua, and all that. So I've pointed out three in Newcastle, but I think there's about 20 odd, and they're all over the place. So you might have noticed them before. If you haven't, have a look around, keep an eye out, and if you spot one, drop us a comment below. Number five, ever wondered why the Gallagher is called the Gallagher? Well, it goes back hundreds of years when the old town wall was in operation. And on what is Newgate Street now, there used to be a gate called Newgate, which was a large structure which housed Newcastle's prison, uh, which had ten rooms, which housed six prisoners in each room. And every now and again, the prisoners who were going to be executed were marched from the prison up to the gallows behind me and publicly executed. Now, the last public hanging was George Vass, who was age 19, and he sexually assaulted and murdered a lady called Margaret Doherty on New Year's morning at the back of Stowell Street. And from that date onwards, up until I think the early 1900s, any executions and hangings were done within the, uh, within the prison itself at Newgate. So the prison was eventually demolished in 1925, but all you fans who are sitting in the Gallagher end there at St James's Park, you are sitting on the site of a thousand executed prisoners. <laughs> So there you go, five things you probably didn't know about Newcastle. If you want to see me do more videos like this, then drop us a comment below. But also, if you want to see it when it comes out, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Catch you next time.